segment a couple weeks ago, and we talked about smell. We talked what a lot we talk about, about smell. What was great about our last session is really understanding that when your home smells a certain way, whether good or bad, that is a huge influence over the people that come to visit you. So if you remember, and if you haven't, go to Facebook or go to our switchingseasons.com, read the article, or go to Facebook and see our YouTube from last time. Because we talked about the things that are in our 10-minute toolbox that really help us stimulate our sense of smell. And remember, if your sense of smell is offended, it'll overtake all your other senses. Very important in design and also in, in event planning, having parties. So what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about sound. It's another thing that we don't think about a whole lot. Everybody thinks their home has to look beautiful or be in the latest styles or in the latest season. Or smell good. Smelling good is very important, but so is the sound. So what we want everybody who's watching this to do is stop and listen to your home. Have you ever listened to your home to see what you hear? Is it very echoey? Do you hear, can you hear background noise? Can you hear the street outside? Mm -hmm. Can you hear your neighbor's dog barking because they never stop? Yeah, that happens a lot. Those are the things we need to listen we to. We have to realize that sound is very primal. Sound is the first sense that's developed when we're in the womb. And I think that's so interesting because sound is what connects us to all other cultures around the world. If you go to any culture on this planet, music in particular plays a big role in that. And if you ever notice little kids, you know, when they're out, maybe you're at a festival, let's say the Garlic Festival, because we are in Gilroy. We are in Gilroy. Yes, we are. Garlic candle. And, gar and we didn't talk about garlic in our smell last time. We didn't. We have garlic candles. We're going to have to talk about that okay. at some other time, yes. Another time. But sound is so primal. If you look at little kids when they're out, like at a festival listening to music, little kids will just move. And they're so free with that, and too bad we aren't anymore. But music and sound is what ties us all together. So we have to realize how important that is even in our home. Because remember what we're, we've been talking about and will continue talking about, not only with our 10-minute toolbox but in future videos, is that your senses have to become in balance in order for, again, your home to feel warm and comfortable, whether you're having a party or whether it's just people coming over or whether it's just your own family. So we're trying to balance and blend all our senses. So sound is primal and really important in our toolbox. It does. It sets the mood so much. In uh, the elementary schools here in this area, we have a program called Arts Alive that's run by the parents. And I've taught that for many years to many of the grades. And one of my favorite ones is, I think it's the first graders, that we do something with music and art. And these first graders have to get out their big crayon and their piece of paper, and they have to close their eyes. And I start playing music. And I start playing lullaby music. And they're moving their pen and their pencil or their crayon around. And then we go to marching band. And you see them start bouncing, and so their hands are bouncing too. And I turn on the crazy rock music, the, the, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, and then we that. stop. You're really good at that. Is that good? Yeah, I've done this a few times. Very good. So then we look at their papers, and we see that they have these light little lines when the lullaby was playing. And then they go absolutely ballistic when we start playing the music, mm -hmm. the rock music. Mm -hmm. Then we go back and I play the same songs again and have them start coloring and they're grabbing the bold, dark, crazy colors when that rock music's playing and the lullabies are playing and they're doing real soft. It just, it affects all their senses. So they open their eyes and see their paper and they think this is absolutely hilarious. This is actually it's just how I would draw in general. That's how you would just draw in general. Songs in my head. Well, and think about how this affects you when you're having a party. One of the examples I always talk about is my sister a few years ago was having a New Year's Eve party. And it was 3 in the morning, and people were still going strong. And she was exhausted. And she looked at me, and she goes, God damn, I want these people to go home. And I said, turn the music off. And she kind of looked at me and went, okay. So she didn't just turn the music off, she put on some really calm, peaceful music. So it kind of went from, you know, Rolling Stones, Easy Top, hardcore rock and roll, to this nice, soft, quiet music, and people just almost immediately got the idea. It wasn't like she shut it off and said, okay, get the heck out of here. It was like our music got quieter and people calmed down, and eventually they left. So again, realize how much a part of your home music plays, how much it creates a mood. Right. Very the same important. thing if you're trying to start entertaining and people just don't seem to be connecting with your event or your party. Stop and listen to your house. 
stop and listen. Instead of look around and go, do I have enough food? Mm -hmm. You know, is, is it not clean? What's the problem? Is it smelling? Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. Stop and listen. You might have forgot to turn on the music. Or maybe the sound outside or the neighbors next door, the barking dog is taking over and distracting people more and causing more of an irritation that they don't even realize is going on, but it's affecting the way that they're reacting to your party. So in our 10 minute toolbox, and again, this is something you always have around, but obviously you wanna keep different types of music depending on the type of mood that you wanna create. So whether it's some wine music, as this one's called, island Romantic jams, dinners. you know, hardcore rock and roll if you're if you want to dance. Whatever you're trying to create, this is always something in our collective toolbox that we have. And the nice thing too is I like to keep a lot of different instrumental sometimes. Yeah, it's nice. People don't not have to have to sing along and know the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Instrumental, but I get these all the time. It's just got the simple, it's a probably a 40 minutes worth of music mm -hmm. at the Dollar Tree all the time and I'll pick up the tropical one and the magical pan pipes and the lullabies and just pick up everything for five bucks I've got five different moods I can set for my parties and I just keep them close by another thing that's nice if you don't have a CD player to play is the televisions now yeah. you can get on with your satellite and you turn on that satellite music and you can choose from anything yeah. play Disney music if you want mm -hmm. play your Western music play whatever it is for your party and it's right there on your television yeah screen kind of goes blank but your music's playing and it really sets your mood. So, so not stop no excuses at all for not having some nice sound. So now let's talk about different sounds that aren't so much man-made as music but more again primal but things that we can create in our own home. And one of the neatest and most beautiful sounds I think we can create and bring into our home is the sound of water. Now we have our little um, indoor fountain here and not only is this nice to have inside but obviously out on your patio. Water again, the sound of water is very primal. And again remember we're not talking about rushing big you know, waterfall sounds. We're talking about some nice calming sounds of water. Water sounds also can help with some of that background noise that maybe you want to um, make a little bit less noisy. Often, if, I don't know if many of you have gone to restaurants where they'll have fountains, but a lot of reasons they do, and it's not only just for visual, but the sound helps cut out maybe some of that parking lot noise or traffic. Kitchen noise. Yeah, or kitchen noise even. So water is beautiful. And remember too that the sound of water, for example, if you ever notice when you come back from the beach, that you're very relaxed and you go, well, of course I am because I went to the beach. But it's more than that. The sound of waves actually put you in that alpha state and the alpha state is a very relaxing sound. So remember that water is a very important element to help create some really wonderful ways to stimulate that sense of sound. Yeah, yeah. it's also been proven if you're having writer's block or need to get creative with something or even trying to come up with what you want to do for those people that are coming over. You've got some water going. It's been shown that it gets your creative senses going and it helps you become more open with your ideas and, and can create things that you wouldn't if you didn't otherwise have the water. Remember, so. this is all about creating mood. This is all about creating environment. And environment is what design is about, what decorating is about, what having a great party or event is right. about. When you want people to feel good and be comfortable. So again, remember, Having our senses tickled and stimulated, which is all what we're about, is really important in your whole scheme of what you're trying to plan. And our whole purpose is showing them that anybody can do it. It's and very it's easy. easy. You don't have to go find things. Exactly. Um, what else do we have? The wind. Yes. Wind chimes, an easy part that's another natural thing. Not necessarily something we keep in the toolbox, but I do keep them around for different seasons and, and switch them. This one is definitely for the Me, spring. For switching seasons? For switching seasons. Wow. I switch wind you chimes. switch wind chimes. We should, Excellent. We should call the switching seasons. I know, seasons. I think we should. That's Very fantastic. good. Fantastic. Yes. Summertime, I go more with the bamboo. Christmas, I put out jingle bells. The wind helps me create the sound, and it just... As they're approaching my house or they're on the back patio, it's very subtle, but it brings in exactly what we're trying to get going. Okay, so we've shown you a lot of really wonderful ways to stimulate sound within your home. Again, whether you're having a party or whether you just want it for yourself. So let's just remember that, and you can read a lot more about this on our website, switchingseasons.com.